Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to talk to people much, much smarter than I am. And, and today's uh, meeting is it's protecting Main Street over Wall Street. So uh, I want to talk about uh, Silicon Valley Bank because it doesn't seem like they were protecting Maine or Wall Street, quite honestly. And I'm astonishing because it doesn't seem like there are a lot of people talking about this. And this almost effectively was going to blow up the economy, <laughs> you know? And uh, it's astonishing. And uh, as far as I know, I haven't read about any kind of charges or anything like that. And, you know, th that dude was back to Hawaii to his uh, gigantic house. And uh, again, it's astonishing that there seems to be more outrage on that as well, too. And, and to me, it's also astonishing that you can have one bank, one bank could crash the entire economy. And once they realized what was available uh, is that the White House and everybody all agreed that we have to act very decisively and quickly as well. Blows, blows my mind that, that that is even made possible. And my question to anyone on here, and I don't mean that in to be uh, uh, aggressive, it's an honest question because I, I really don't know. So what was behind Silicon Valley Bank's crash? Was it greedy? Was it incompetent? Or they don't care <laughs> because the government's gonna be there to clean up this kind of a mess. Or is it one, some, or all of them, or whatever? Honestly, because I don't understand what it actually is. So I want people, uh, experts and much small, smarter than me to, to know where it was. Senator, uh, first of all, let me say I, I appreciate your and agree with your outrage uh, about uh, what happened with respect to Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, there was significant bank mismanagement of interest rate risk yeah, that, and liquidity risk. That's a wonderful risk. euphemism, <laughs> mismanagement, you know, but yeah, I'm sorry. And, you know, they, they engaged in activities um, such as uh, eliminating hedges, uh, that would have um, helped them deal with interest rate risk in order to increase short-term profits. Their incentive compensation was not uh, appropriate. It was not aligned with making sure that they took care of risk. Uh, there were enormous um, failures uh, at that institution, and I share your outrage about the conduct. Um, Senator, I think the short answer to your question is, is, is all of the above. I mean, this, ba this bank touched all the bases. All of the above? Right, okay, yeah. And, and um, um, it, it was positioned so that when it experienced stress, because of its reliance on uninsured deposits, that had a contagion effect on other institutions that really did, for a moment, put the system at risk. And, and, and that was the, the, the larger issue that was revealed here, I think. I'll just say that I generally agree um, with both of my colleagues here on the panel. Uh, certainly, the events of March were a reminder of us all to need to be risk-focused and ready to act expeditiously. Uh, the only thing I would add is that there was very aggressive growth at that institution without the commensurate uh, controls. And that's why we, as safety and soundness prudential supervisors, that we pay very special attention to that and, and put a lot of emphasis on that. I want to I want to glar, uh, clarify was uh, sorry was a, a, aggressive uh, aggressive growth is that uh, greed <laughs> a nice way of saying greed because uh, it, it seems to me and I'm and I'm not, I mean that's you know you're uh, uh, but but I guess my last question because I have less than a, a minute left but but it, it, it's it's like should one relatively kind of a smaller bank be in the position to crash the economy. It's astonishing that one that's that's even possible. But now, when it's actually happened, you know why? You know why isn't this like every day until we make sure this can never happen again? And I mean, I guess you effectively agree. I'm I'm assuming that, but of course, I you know asking. Senator, I, I agree with you. I think it's a, a wake up call that we need strong capital in the system. We need strong liquidity in the system. We need strong supervision. I, I think the kind of contagion we saw suggests that there's a, a higher probability of default and loss given default uh, in our banking system because of that contagion. And we need to have strong capital and we need to have strong liquidity. And Senator, it also underscores the interconnectedness of the banking system. So we had a bank 
$200 billion is not little, but it's not near the top either, but it was in a position to, to cause real financial stability risk. Um, another 30 seconds, Mr. Of course. Brown. Thank you, sir. And for the other, I'm very honestly interested in, in yeah. Uh, certainly, Marty is right on the interconnectedness issue within the system. Um, it also highlights the need for us on the Financial Stability Oversight Council to coordinate and ensure that we are effectively working to protect against the risks so that one institution does not bring down the system. I think the, the incident underscores the importance of us keeping our eye on the ball with regard to safety and soundness. That's what drives our missions. That's where we, that's where we need to drive towards. And th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Fetterman. I think Senator Fetterman's last question and the summary from each of you really summarizes the hearings well. So, John, thank you for that. 